Hey everybody, this is Tim. I had at F I'm at FJM with Scott. Scott, what's your last name? Scott Winters. So Scott Winters, and what's your job here? I um, am the graphics guy. I do all the artwork that goes on any of the uniforms, flags. I also do all the image of FJM, the uh, catalog work, the print work. Very important guy. So I, I, Mike was giving me the tour, which I'm gonna be showing you guys other things from that too. But when we got in here and I saw your face, I was like, I recognize this guy because I saw you perform all those years in Miller's. So the what world's you, alive with color. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I remember your face. Uh, and I remember what a good performer you were. So what years were you marching? Um, I marched 84 through 87. I know it's unbelievable because I look like I'm 35. I know. You start as a tiny, tiny child. Tiny child, <laughs> I was only 12. That's right. But I remember you in that color show especially. Uh, because you were like the dancer guy, like yeah. the with the ballet girl, yep, and uh, yeah, it was a great day. I mean, I look back on those years, and it was the best times of my life. Um, a lot Very of work, cool. uh, work and effort goes into that. So, and I'm still in the uh, pageantry world. I'm um, still today. I worked with Miami Spikeberg High School for many, many years. Um, so yeah, you, you can't. Not a bad guard, that one. Yeah, you can't get it out of your blood. Well, so we're gonna talk about your job here at FJM and what you do and how you were on the cutting edge of this digital printing stuff. I think sure. it's really, really interesting. So I'm gonna turn off this video and turn it around, so. Okay, so Scott, we're in your office. You're gonna show us how you were on sort of on the cutting edge of the digital printing thing. Yep. So you take Michael Cesario's designs and sort of implement them on the computer. Can you explain how you do that? Yeah, so. Um, when a client gets a new sketch from Michael, which is like right in here, I always just drop his sketch into my uh, starting document just so I can make sure that I'm I'm pulling the inspiration from what he has. Um, Michael and I work really, real well together because I can take a one inch by one inch sketch of his and kind of see what he intended by every little stroke and squiggle of a, of a pen. And I think it's just because of my fine arts background because um, um, my um, education is in fine arts. So um, I can kind of see what he was wanting or intending. So then I just translate it into the given pattern pieces. So like here on Claudia Taylor's that they're wearing this year, this um, shoulder piece right here, I translated this little chicken doodles into what this is right here. So I literally just take color inspiration and whatnot from these sketches and translate it into the given artwork to be printed. And there's something about the way you, you think about the way the light hits, the way that it's gonna create depth and um, sort of- Yeah, and again, I, and again, I think it's from my fine arts background because um, instead of taking computer classes when I was younger and going to school, I was, I was doing painting classes and, and lifestyle classes and sketch classes. And so I always go about this thinking about where is my light source? Um, how does that light hit an object and does it roll around that object or is there a sharp edge and does it create a harsh line and a bubbly thing and then where does that shadow fall and does that shadow fall on something else and does then that shadow wrap around something and give it depth and dimension. So that's really my goal when I'm doing Michael's pieces is like how much can I make this jacket look deep in 3D and make it look like it's plugged in that so from a distance it's still readable, it's still electric, and there's um, movement and life in there. It's amazing, and that's why the print is so vivid from the field, because you're, you're having to deal with people seeing this a long way away. Correct. Okay, so you have some examples of some early digital printing that you worked yeah, on? Yeah, so, so back in, I started working for FJM in here, in-house, in 2009. Um, so when I came in here, they did um, peace flags. Everything was sewn. At that time, everybody, I mean, a regular flag had probably, you know, it could be up to 45 pieces mm. that had to be sewn for 45 total. So it was very time consuming and right. whatnot. So right. at that time, we had decided that we were no longer gonna do peace flags. And I thought to myself, well, why can't I just print them? So um, I knew that I could do that process, and then it led me to, well, why can't I do more than just ombres on uniforms? Right, so early on, they were doing some digital printing, but it was Correct. just the ombre pattern. Just the ombre, it was just that, like a black that went into a blue, or uh, a green that went into a light green. Right. Um, so then 
I had talked to Michael about this, and Michael said that they had tried in the past, but everything just seemed flat and washed out, and it just wasn't what you would expect from FJM. Right. So I kind of took it upon myself because I, you know, I'm like, I can do this. Um, <laughs> so I went to our uh, pattern guy and I said, hey, can you give me some pieces, some pattern pieces to some of Michael's sketches? So all I did was, in Photoshop, I just took what Michael had off of there and I laid in a design that then I laid into a pattern piece that then I had printed on our polygab. Amazing. So I kind of did this little presentation for all the Millers of, hey, <clears throat> look what Scott can do. <laughs> and um, Well, and but that's an amazing innovation. Like that changed the industry, really. The did. fact that you could print something and it could look like that. And, um, and Michael was very impressed by it all. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. So you see the drawing and then you were able to figure out how to print that. So again, your fine art background allowed you to design these in such a way that they read differently on, once they were printed, is that right? I believe so. I mean, I don't know um, everybody else's process and, and how they go about it. I only know my way that I do it. Sure. And I just feel that um, I've come up with the um, perfect recipe to um, make these things pop and stand out and be unique for FJM. So, um, and it's not like we're the only ones doing this kind of printing now, but back in 2010, this was unheard of. And so I just think it's just another way that FJM is, is kind of leading the way and um, right. doing our part to make you look good. Well, Scott, it's awesome to talk to you, but I'm impressed if you were on the leading edge of figuring out that you could actually do this kind of printing and figure out how to make it look right, we owe, all owe you a great debt because what that's brought to our activity has been really exciting. Yeah, I mean, the possibilities are truly endless. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for talking to me. Yep. Watch for two other videos from my day at FJM. Watch as I tour the facility and we see all the different steps in the process of creating a uniform. And also a special video only for members of Marching Arts Education, where Ross Werner shows me a collection of great drum corps uniforms from the past.